life has to be lived with insight you need to know what input you can have in life as you progress with it or even before you start doing the life that you're supposed to do i think the worst thing that can happen to you or to me is to live for seven eight nine decades and then we find out that the intelligence that we were using or maybe we didn't even use any intelligence at all to do our lives and now it has come to an end and there's no respite for it so in the episodes we're discussing the different types of intelligences that we can put together and that we can be able to use in our lives so that we can become people of productivity people of purpose and people of resilience so stay tuned for one more piece of intelligence today Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. The past, the present, and the future, you are in the middle. You lived in the past. You are in the present. But then there is a future that is yet to come. The quality of the life that you're going to live in the present and maybe even in the future is going to be dependent on two things. It's going to be dependent on how reflective you are and it's going to be dependent on how visionary you become. To be reflective, you're going to get information that I've been calling intelligence based on how you have lived. Jim Rohn said that a life not reviewed is not a worth life to live. And so when you review the life or become reflective of what has passed, it gives you some hints, some information, some knowledge, some intelligence on what works, what didn't work, and what you need to do. But then also, when you become visionary, which means you're looking forward for tomorrow, you can have also some intelligence on how you're going to live your life. In fact, that would be the best way to do it, that you go for a life worth living. You don't just exist coasting around doing things on autopilot like a bird or like some animal in the wild. You are the crown of creation. So you get some intelligence first. The intelligence that tells you this is the kind of life that you're supposed to live. And unfortunately for us, for some time, we get this quote-unquote intelligence, a wrong kind of intelligence from the generations that have passed. They were living in their own contexts. And they design their own education systems in their own contexts. But the world has changed today, which means we need to get our own intelligence and apply that intelligence in our own contexts. And so we can be able to grow and mature and become the biggest versions, the best versions for ourselves as we go on with our lives. So there's two, those two things. Either you're becoming reflective, which is very important. The bird does not reflect about yesterday's misses. The lion does not reflect about yesterday's, you know, they did not kill or whatever it is. They don't envision tomorrow. They live in the moment. They live by instinct in the moment, but not you as a human being. You're not supposed to live on autopilot. You're not supposed to flatline. Flatlining is not how we're supposed to live our lives. We're supposed to be active, be involved, be present. You're supposed to get 
this kind of intelligence, that kind of intelligence in our lives and we're supposed to live it as this. Because life does not have everything figured out. The moment you figure out every detail in life, that's the moment you're supposed to die. And basically nobody can do that. But life has always going is going always going to have a possibility of a pivot here, a possibility of a pivot there. You know, this possibility, this potential, that potential, this kind of growth, that kind of growth, and so on. And so we need these kinds of intelligences that we find either by being reflective or being visionary so that we can be able to apply ourselves in life. And to do a very fast recap, the first kind of intelligence that you need is achievement. What things have you achieved? The things that you've achieved in the past will tell you the possibilities that you have in the future because where you achieved, it means that you can still achieve right there again. You can double in there and so on and so forth. And I told you my story about the achievement of writing. And I knew I could be able to write, but I did not write because I had to do biology, physics, and chemistry, and agriculture, and Christian religious education, and social sciences, and, and so on. That's not how life is supposed to live. We're supposed to live life with intelligence, working intelligence. My working intelligence was my achievement, my achievement in my life. So if you ask yourself, what are your 10 major achievements for the past 10 years and you don't have an answer, that means that you're supposed to become a visionary that can ask himself or herself this question, what will be my next 10 biggest achievements for the next 10 years? And you go for them. And that's how you become someone who is of value, someone who is growing themselves, someone who is not autopiloting. The next thing that you need to gauge to find out if you are being productive or the next kind of intelligence is this, impact what kind of impact have you left what are people saying about your life what did you make people feel that is the ultimate reason for living it is not to amass things and to pay bills and to become good and and so on it is to create impact i am here so that somebody else can have joy in their lives can have peace in their lives their bills can be paid they can have you know hope with humanity that's why i'm created i'm here so that someone else can be inspired with my story and so on so what impact are you creating so if you look reflectively in your life and you see that there is no impact there then you become a visionary that says i am going to be impactful in this and in that way and the third thing that you need to find the third intelligence in in your life that you need to use to be someone of value is the need for change and improvement. That is the intelligence. In which ways have you changed and improved over the past 10 years, 3 years, 5 years? In which ways have you changed? Even in the present moment, in which ways do you need to change? See, if you look reflectively at life and you find that there are some ways in your life that you need to change, then you start changing. And there is always going to be something that can change and you can improve. Believe me, there are negative things in our lives that we need to get rid of. Negative behaviors and so on. And then number four, the next intelligence that you need to build in your life is this. What personal growth have I achieved over the past X number of years and so on? Being reflective. And if you look at your life and you see that there is absolutely no personal growth in there, then it tells you that you need to be a visionary at that moment in time and decide that from now on, my vision for my life in terms of personal growth looks like this. I'm going to read 30 minutes every single day. I'm going to listen to something instructive every uh, day, maybe for 20 minutes or something like that. And I'm going to be consistent with it. That's how you become productive with that. And today... I want to discuss something absolutely important. What is the next, what is the fifth intelligence that you need in your life in order to be someone who grows? If you're reflective in your life, you're going to ask yourself one question. This is the question. How many risks have I taken in my life? See, one of the worst things that we can live looking forward to in life is safety. You know, being on a wide place where there is a lot of predictability, 
a lot of safety, a lot of light, a lot of comfort and coziness and ease, no risk. I mean, a lot of things that we expect, a lot of expectations being met clockwork. But risk is something that contributes towards our growth. In fact, there is no development into the next level of my life if there is no risk involved. If, you know, yesterday I was watching Shark Tank, I think it was season 9, where there is this entrepreneur who had done crazy stuff and so on, a group of guys, and then the sharks asked them this question, how much money do you have in the bank? And they said, we have 600000 in the bank, $600,000 in the bank. And yet they are looking for more money to do something else. The message that was being communicated to the sharks was this, that they do not believe in their product well enough to risk the 600000 that they have in the bank to bet on it. And guess what? They lost the investment from the sharks. But the intelligence that we need to find out in our lives, and I know when I talk about risks, the intelligence that we need to find out in our life is the intelligence of risk. When I talk about risk, we have different appetites of risk. There are those of us who are very cautious by nature. If you do the disc, by the way, there are those of us who are basically built to be extremely cautious. We do not want to, you know, we are so loyal and conscious. But even in my loyalty and even in my consciousness or my cautiousness, I've got to have some level of risk that I do apply. Something that makes me to squirm from side to side. A decision that is basically I have no idea how it's going to pay off. (laughs) I have no idea if they're going to say yes or no. But I'm risking my reputation. I'm risking my money. You know, I am in a dark place. Nothing is predictable. I don't know if money is going to come at the end of the month. I don't know if it's going to come at the end of the month or the end of the the week. Whatever it is, I don't know. But I choose not to stay in safety. I choose to walk on the edge because when I'm walking on the edge, I am much more alive than the guy who is walking at the center. The guy who is walking at the center couldn't care at all detail about their lives but the guy who is walking on the edge of the cliff has got to be necessarily very extremely alert with their next step with their next thought with their next breath they are heightened in terms of being alive they are much more alive you are much more alive when you're facing death than when you have life all over you that's the basically the aspect of taking risks. Growth and improvement is a taking risk business. You cannot grow and you cannot improve if you're not taking risks. So this intelligence of risk is absolutely important. See, I'm currently reading a biography of Elon Musk and this guy is way crazy. That's why I just gave out a caveat and I say that the appetites for risks they vary from one person to another. Elon Musk, I'm amazed at the level of crazy daring activities that he has and projects and my goodness, the way he went to Russia and uh, tried to buy a rocket and so on and they couldn't and then on their way back he just designed a rocket and you guy. See, risking means getting out of your comfort zone. It means getting out of the light into the dark. It means getting out of the flat surface into the rocky surface. It means getting out of the flat surface into the slimy surface that is steeped. That's what risking is all about. It means getting out of the predictable environment to the unpredictable environment. It means getting out of the known environment to the unknown environment. How often do you do that? Seriously, how often do you do that in different aspects of your life? See, keep trying this and keep trying that. That's how we learn. Intelligence comes from attempting one thing and attempting another thing. I'm not talking about gambling and betting. I'm not talking about that because gambling and betting is in a controlled environment. I kid you not. It's just that you are the one who is not in control of it, but it's in a controlled environment. I am talking about being bold and daring enough to bring to the fore that which we feel so strong within our hearts. 
no matter how crazy it seems to the world right now by the way those things that seem crazy to the world right now they become commonplace to the world later on only if we took care about them we took action about them and we crafted something right now the world might find that it's crazy but to tomorrow it becomes something that is useful that something that is even needed so if we're not going to take a risk today we will be too late tomorrow when the world needs it ask no care so dare to bring it into life plan to risk it and probably that is the very reason why you are alive and that's why you were born that very thing that you're supposed to risk about probably that's the reason as to why you are here that's why it doesn't come to the chi- on on the chip it doesn't come with uh, any predictability that there is there most of you must have listened or heard about this man called Joel Austin Joel Austin never went to bible school if i get my facts correct Joel Austin was working in the media department when his father was preaching at Lakewood Church and Joel never at one point in time preached a sermon his dad was always asking him and he would say no 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 preaching is not for me and so on and so forth and then his dad gets sick gets admitted and that day Joel answers the call and says okay daddy i'm going to preach and they hook up his daddy and his daddy is listening to Joel preaching Joel took a risk today today how many people is Joel Austin reaching how many books has Joel Austin written if he had not taken that risk in his life and said okay i'm not a speaker i was not born to be a speaker i'm not a preacher and he goes and starts to preach anyway and by the way i think that's one of the reasons as to why you see very many christians bashing Joel Austin saying that where is the fire where is the brimstone why is not condemning why is not you know haranguing people why is it he is he so cool calm and collected when he speaks and so on the man took a risk the man dared so the intelligence that we need today in our lives is the intelligence of risks so you got to ask yourself this question what can i risk today if i've never risked anything in my life and i'm talking to my myself today if i've never risked anything in my life what can i risk today the answer i get out of that question that is one of the most important answers much more important than my academic papers i kid you not and if i take action on that intelligence chances are that i become a better person in the future than i ever would have been so think about that tomorrow we're going to talk about something else but until then bye bye A special shout out to my mentor Jeffrey Howard of Visionary Business University found at mastermindmentor.com who has graciously provided me with the soundtrack and the introductory track to this podcast. Thank you Jeff. Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh clean and inspiring.